everyone. Welcome to our lecture on the data management role of the Clinical Research Associate, or CRA. Our learning objectives for this lecture are to describe the Clinical Research Associate data management tasks. We're also going to practice doing some of those tasks. So we're going to enter a manual query. You're going to verify data points in the system. You'll also use the EDC task functionality to perform some bulk actions or actions that impact multiple data points or fields or even subjects. And finally, I want you to practice documenting a protocol deviation within the system. So let's talk a bit about what those key data management tasks are for a CRA. And first, I'm going to step back for a second and make sure that you are familiar with the, um, the larger role of the CRA, the Clinical Research Associate. And that role is to monitor and support the activities of the clinical site as they are conducting the protocol. So the CRA has a much broader role around site interactions, ensuring compliance with GCP, and also um, facilitating the site's work in rolling subjects. But for our course, we are simply going to focus on the data management tasks. So really, for a CRA, one of the first things you need to do is complete your system or platform specific training. So if you were going to have actions within the EDC, which you typically would, you would need to complete the training that would show you how to do all of those actions. The other thing that is a very important task of the CRA is to ensure data currency to make sure the site is, is entering the data they are collecting real time. You're also going to be entering manual queries if you find any discrepancies within the data. Um, you have a query management responsibility. You need to review the site's responses to queries to see if they really address the issue or if they uh, maybe they address the issue, but they raised a new a new issue to be resolved. So for example, you might ask the site, are you sure that the date of birth for this patient is correct? Because if so, they're not old enough to participate in the study. And the site might say, yes, they're, it's, it's right, you're right, they're 17. And although they confirm the date of birth, they have not addressed the bigger issue that the patient might not be eligible for participation. So you would re-query or start a new action there. Um, CRAs also have to close the queries that they have um, open to the site or ensure that other individuals, maybe data management who have issued queries, have also are, making, are keeping currency with site and query closure. They verify in many cases the entry of the source data into the EDC system. And we're going to talk some about the concepts of risk-based monitoring and the way the industry is moving away from performing that task of source data verification for all data points. It used to be the standard was you looked at all of the data and you would go in and verify it. And now we are um, realizing that in most cases there's not a lot of value to that because most of the entry is correct. Instead, we are taking a risk-based approach to determining what fields do need to be verified and if after a site has demonstrated their competency, we can actually even start stop doing that. So we'll talk about that some more as well. And finally, documenting protocol deviations that might be found as part of the source document record review or the EDC data review. I did want to take a second and talk about the overall data flow um, and where the CRA really fits into this. So the one thing that I want to say is throughout this whole process, we are, I should have said, also entering. We're entering data and we're resolving data. That's an ongoing activity that happens. Um, and the CRC, as you've experienced by now, is responsible for initially entering the data. As a CRA, you would be responsible for verifying that data. 
Data management typically is owning the task of doing data review via listings or the results of edit checks, but that sometimes it makes sense for the CRA to also participate in data review. So you say you might see a little blurring or combination of these two tasks. Um, once the data has been entered, verified, and reviewed, we tend to freeze it or say, hey, data is good. Um, we'll ask the PI to review the data and confirm it's accurate to the best of their knowledge and then we will lock the data. Um, moving forward after the lock, typically we go into our analysis and if necessary we can do a relock if we find issues. Okay, let's think about the impact of data currency, first of all. It is very important that the um, data that is collected by the site about a subject is entered into the EDC as quickly as possible. And we've talked before about the fact that you need that information in there in order to protect the welfare of patients. You want to see any data that could tell you there's a safety issue, for example, or even if it's a a very effective um, product. We will talk a little bit about this concept of um, stopping a trial early sometimes for effectiveness because you want to you want to move ahead and get the drug out there. The other thing that um, is important to think about with data currency is that the longer the distance between you, the site collecting the data when they meet with the subject and the data being entered in the database, it, it gets harder if you find discrepancies or you have questions or you notice missing data to reliably get that missing data. So that's another key reason we really want to see that data currency in place there. The um, CRA will also help us identify missing pages or data points. So maybe the site got most of the data that related to the visit into the EDC in a very timely fashion, but it could be that there's a particular page or data point missing. And um, a good example, a little bit of a sad example, but if a patient dies on the study, you typically need to include key information from the autopsy or findings so that you can add to the knowledge as to whether or not the death was related to the drug. So a CRA might say, okay, I see that you have entered the serious adverse event that the patient has died, but I also see that you have yet to enter any data from the autopsy report. So they follow up on those missing pages. And finally, if the site is struggling to keep current with data entry, and this can happen if the site does not have enough staff to handle all of the trials that they're running, or sometimes if the enrollment just goes really, really quickly, the site wasn't anticipating having all of the data in at one point in time and they just can't keep up. So the CRA would sit down and talk with the site staff and ask them, you know, what things are keeping you from being current with the data. How can we help? Do you need to talk about maybe getting more staff? Um, you know, what, what can we do to support you? <clears throat> Query management is another aspect of currency that can impact the integrity of the data as well as, again, safety and well-being of sites. So it's really important that the CRA understand what queries are have been issued to the site. Let's maybe see if there are trends in there that indicate a quality issue or a training issue where the site staff are making a lot of the same mistakes over and over again. But also, you don't want to have a huge um, backlog of queries that were issued to the site they haven't responded to. Because again, those two things come into play. You might not have all of the data that reflects the patient's safety status or efficacy status. And the other thing is that whole aspect of the longer, the longer uh, duration of time that goes between when you noticed an issue and when you fix it, the harder it is to really get accurate information. So you want to be timely. Um, you also, as a CRA, if you have issued a query to the site, part of what you do is look to see what they said and, and if that query response, we call it a query response, is appropriate and effectively resolves the issue. 
If it does, then you'll close the query. If it does not, then you typically have to reissue the query or requery. And then as you're doing your review of source documents or you're performing your SDV, um, or maybe you are getting feedback from other reviewers, perhaps a safety or medical monitor, you might find issues with the data that you will need to write your own query for to generate that out. So you could be generating your manual queries. I want to take a second and remind you um, the difference between a system query and a manual query. So in a system query, um, we've written programmatic checks of some sort into the system. So the minute that you save your data, the system is going to check it and see if it violates any of the parameters or program checks. And then it will pop up a query and ask you to respond to it. And you experienced this when you were entering your mock data in the previous module. So you got a sense of those uh, system generated queries and how they come through and the various steps that you might need to take to resolve them. But we're going to focus a little more in this assignment on the concept of the manual query. So again, manual queries are typically entered by the, by the CRA or the data management role. Sometimes they'll be entered directly by people that are managing serious adverse events or safety issues. They might be issued by the individuals that are coding the data. We'll talk about coding a little bit later in the course or even a medical monitor. And essentially, a manual query is simply a question that is posed to the site after somebody has performed a review of the data and it is not generated by the system in response to a program check, but it's generated by an individual reviewing an issue and saying, hmm, I need a little more information here. So in these examples, you can see that we um, are asking the site, the site has reported that they have have an undiagnosed um, lesion on their neck. And the question to the site is, was the lesion biopsied? Uh, biopsied? And you can see that it was open to the site from data management here. The site responds and says, yes, it's biopsied and the result was benign. So at this point, the um, the CRA or the individual reviewing this query is going to say, okay, does this really um, respond to the query? Does it close it out? Do I need any additional information? If they feel like it fully addresses their questions, they can choose to close the query. If they feel like they need more information, they can choose to requery. Talk a little bit now about verification. And verification, I think we we talk about terms and tasks of verifying and reviewing the data. And I think that can be a little confusing because both of those have both a, um, a common language meaning and a technical meaning in the system. So essentially verifying data means, you know, somebody, anybody is looking to make sure that they think that data is valid. And reviewing means that somebody is looking at the data and reviewing it. But in the terms of um, metadata, those are actually two tasks associated with a role. So a CRA is going to verify data points and they are in the system going to look at each data point that uh, compare it to the source document to see if it was recorded correctly in the EDC. And then they will literally click this little flag that says verify and a record is recorded in the system so that we all know that that check was performed. A nice thing about metadata and one of the things that I'm going to want you to practice is you have a choice. You can do the verification step for each individual data point that you need to verify or you can click up here and verify all available fields on the CRF. So it's kind of nice. It can save you a little bit of time. Uh, again, I want to point out that as an industry, we're moving away from requiring a verification of every data point. They used to call that 100%. SDV or source document verification and instead we are starting to ask ourselves if we can only need to verify critical data or even if we only need to verify the critical data for a few patients in order to assure ourselves that the site is understands how to record data and conduct the study.
So you'll hear more and more about the risk approach to monitoring and verification. Um, the other thing that you can do, we talked about verifying individual data points and we talked about verifying all of the forms on a um, on a uh, CRF, but sometimes you can have completed all of your verification, you're going through and doing all of your data points and you're ready to say, I'm going to do a group of forms or a group of subjects and I'm going to confirm in, in one action that I have performed this task and I haven't found any issues. So metadata allows the CRA to use the um, EDC tasks area, see this here, and in that they can go in and select the subjects or um, forms that they want to verify and then just click the button one time and have all that verification tagged in the system. We'll practice all of those. As a CRA, you want to be able to go in and be very efficient in your verification process. So you don't want to have to look at every single form one by one to find the fields that you need to verify or that are ready for verification. So most systems will have some sort of reporting or filter option to allow you to find those forms that need to be or pages that need to be verified so you can quickly move to them. And in metadata, we are going to explore different ways that you can set filters on the forms so that you can find maybe all of the all forms that need verification or all adverse event forms or only the screening forms. So I just want you to be familiar with this concept of uh, looking for the data you need to action in a really targeted fashion. After you have performed your verification tasks, um, typically there's going to be a confirmation. They want to make sure that you, you know that you're doing this verification, that you're aware of which patients and, and fields you've selected, and you're ready to say yes, that this is um, what I want to do and I'm confirming it. And for metadata, that is the set verified um, confirmation. And I'm going to have you practice that as well. And to do that, you'll get this notice that you are going to um, set something as verified and you'll need to confirm it. You'll need to click on the set verified button to confirm it. Sometimes we still need to unverify fields. It could be that uh, we we get a new source document and we need to go back and unverify so that we can you know come back and do the comparison or maybe we inadvertently selected a wrong form or a patient to verify so you do have a way to back that out and this will all be uh, tracked in the audit trail uh, you can go in to the data point that you verified by mistake and you can select the unverify fields option by simply clicking here toggling this and again that's very easy to do but I'm going to have you practice a little bit of that in the assignment all right and finally in terms of the database lock these activities are really very much the same ones that we're working through with the CRA you're going to be checking to make or as a CRC you're going to be checking to make certain that all the subject data is entered all the samples are shipped all the discrepancies are involved resolved queries are updated and that the PI has um, completed all of his signatures